Hello everyone and welcome to the open day for the MA, MSc Computing and Creative Industries modular program at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina Capdevilacano and I'll be your host today. And today we're here to share all about this modular program at CCI and we'll have with us Hansel Bregeman, course leader at the modular MA, MSc and current students at the course Proud, Antonia and April. To give you an overview of how the session is structured first, we're going to start talking about the Creative Computing Institute. And in order to do that, we have three different videos that we're going to be sharing with you. The first one is about the CCI facilities and resources. The second one is about our research themes and the social mission and public program. And the third one is about the local area in Camberwell and Peckham that you'll get to enjoy if you join us here at CCI. After that, I will invite Hunter to join us and we'll be going through a presentation which will cover the structure, the units and approach of the modular program. And right after that, we will be inviting the three students here on this virtual space and we will be covering different questions in our Q&A section. And in that section, we have gathered the most frequently asked questions, but we invite you to Drop us a message on the YouTube chat. If you have any queries, any doubts that you would like us to cover, you will have the opportunity to message us during the session and we'll pick up your questions in the end. We'll do our best to cover them all. So before we continue, just a note to say that if you have difficulties following along the session, know that the entire event is being recorded and it will be re-uploaded on our YouTube channel. So you know, if you want to follow up with English closed captions, you'll have the chance to, to do so after the event is finished in a couple of weeks' time. So let's get this started. We'll begin by watching the first video, which will walk you through all the facilities and tell you about all the resources that students have access to here at CCI. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the CCI Facilities Tour. Over the next few minutes, we are going to show you around the campus and tell you a bit about the facilities and resources available to our students. CCI South London is located across two buildings along Peckham Road in Camberwell. We share our buildings with Camberwell College of Arts, which is a fantastic opportunity for CCI students to get to know and collaborate with students studying courses like fine art, photography, graphic design and illustration. The Green Coat Building hosts teaching spaces and technical spaces for students studying creative computing and creative robotics. It also hosts the Dark Lab for AR, VR and interaction design. This summer, we are going to be creating additional technical spaces in this building to support the new creative robotics courses that open in September 2023. CCI is located on the fifth floor of Peckham Road, where we have teaching spaces and technical labs as well as a kitchen, which is our main student hangout and study space. We have several high-spec workstation computers where you can work on machine learning, data science and other intensive computing tasks. We have a library on site with access to a range of books, e-books, periodicals and databases. Our dedicated librarian, Billy Nia, ensures that these resources are kept up to date to help you complete your studies. Across the courtyard is Garden's house one of a growing number of halls of residence across London. And on the ground floor is the Learning Zone, a space for self-directed study that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to all UAL students. There are places to eat, like our canteen, student advice centre and support services, and an art and material shop. In summer 2023, we will redevelop the former London College of Fashion building at High Holborn. We will share this building with UIL's brand new PhD hub, which will help to ensure that CCI's focus remains around the development of world-class research. At our Holborn site, we will create new technical, teaching and library facilities to support our new courses in computer science and data science. The technicians here at CCI all have a decade of experience doing really cool stuff with emerging technology. We'd love to help the students here with any questions they have about their projects. 
The Dark Lab is for experimenting with interaction, projection, sound and VR. Great for permanent projection setups. We've got a couple of VR booths. We've got loads of speakers and many other toys to play with. I specialize in creative coding and especially interactive things using Kinects and cameras and game engines, 3D graphics. We have a whole bunch of equipment that students can take out on loan including projectors, Kinects. We also have laptop lockers where you can get a laptop to work with. Physical computing really is just the connection to the physical world, to the data. Students have, have played with physical computing all sorts of different ways. A lot of interaction with gaming and the VR world as well. Sensing various different bits and pieces using touch especially, all sorts of different sensors. Uh, to put things in a virtual world or vice versa, so they could have things coming from a virtual world and bringing them into the real world. We generally lend Arduinos to all of the students and with that we have a collection of different modules. This allows us to interact with the world in various different ways. Those modules could be sound sensing, they could be image sensing, they could be sensing the environment in some other way. But the benches here are for the students to solder and uh, prototype, put different boards together. We have different components with different levels of exploration with electronics, so you can quickly get something together on breadboard or you might want to make something that's more solid. I help students who want to use the digital knitting machine, the digital embroidery machine, and who are also thinking about incorporating electronics or computation into textiles or wearable kind of technology. We have a Silver Reed digital knitting machine. Um, so that's a domestic knitting machine that can be computer controlled. So you can use it to create digital patterns and that's used to produce knitted fabric. I tend to think of it like a 3D printer kind of for textiles. And then the other textiles machine that we have is a brother digital embroidery machine. So that's kind of fully automated programmable embroidery machine that you can use to embroider textiles. This is Digital Fabrication Lab, and we have 3D printing machine and laser cutting machine here. For our 3D printers, you just drag your design into the software and slicing it and directly push it to the printer and your design will be materialized. For the laser cutter, it's also very efficient, even very complex pattern. It will only take like uh, several minutes. Most of students will use it to um, generate the housing for their physical computing things. It helps students to materialize their project quickly. To find out more about our facilities and equipment, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now, a lot of students are interested in finding out more about our research themes that we explore here at CCI and the social mission that underpins our research, our teaching, and the public act uh, program activities that we run as well. In the following video, we will share with you all about these research topics and hopefully we'll get you excited about joining us here at CCI as well. Hope you enjoy it. CCI's key research themes are creativity, machine learning, and AI, human-computer interaction and platforms, and big data and digital citizenship. So we're interested in how machine learning and AI can transform people's creative practices, enable the creation of totally new kinds of work in music and art, and enable new people to get involved in creative practice. We've created a lot of software tools like Wekinator, Mimic, and InteractML, which are used by tens of thousands of people around the world to make new music and art and games. We've had staff and students exhibit work that's created with AI at venues like the Whitney and the Barbican, um, and we've had collaborations with artists and musicians like Arca, Massive Attack, and others. A number of staff and students are also leaders in community and activist groups. For instance, the Code Liberation Foundation teaches women and non-binary people how to make games, and the Critical Platform Studies Group explores how digital platforms might encode and even reproduce patterns of problematic power structures in society. 
This rich and exciting research environment is the product of many staff coming together from lots of different disciplines. These include not just computer science and art, but music, engineering, design, philosophy, art history, and all sorts of other domains. We all bring our excitement and experience from these different research projects with us into the classroom. Uh, and it's a place that I really love teaching and I'm excited to share it with you. CCI's teaching, research, and outreach activities are all informed by our social mission. This mission has three components. They are digital inclusion, diversity in technology, and digital entrepreneurship. First, we are committed to the inclusion of marginalized people in the creation of technology and in the use of technology. This informs what we teach both in the classroom and beyond the classroom. It also means that we have to recognize that the lack of diversity in the tech workforce right now both uh, stems from and contributes to broader problems in our society, and we have to address these too. Secondly, we're really mindful about the impacts that technology has on the broader world. We have to recognize the potential harms that come with technology, whether that means um, harms to well-being or even exacerbating bias and inequality. At the same time, we're very involved in projects that aim to have a more positive impact on the world. We are collaborating with the Decolonizing Art Institute at UAL right now to try to surface and mitigate bias in museum collections across the UK. We have staff and students, some with disabilities themselves, who are making technologies that enable new ways for disabled people to interact with technology and create new forms of technology for themselves. And third, CCI is committed to creating digital entrepreneurship opportunities for marginalized people. If we want tech to be a force for good, we need to enable people to apply technology in ways that they're excited and passionate about, where they know technology is going to be useful. So this means applying creative computing to new application areas, to addressing needs in people's communities, and to affecting social change. The Creative Computing Institute's public program can be anything from talks, workshops, short online tutorials, conversations, and it's really aimed at engaging with the community outside of our students. Students join in it too, but it's very much for the general public. The reason I run it with so much passion is because it's a part of my ongoing research and practice, which is about including unheard voices in technology development. I think that we've got as much to give communities as we can learn as an institution from communities. And so engaging with the general public is engaging with users and having that dialogue, that critical dialogue, and then coming back and designing software and hardware from a more informed position is really important. I would love to tell you a little bit more about TechYard. It's a huge part of the CCI's public program and I've been running it for almost three years now. So it started in the pandemic as an online tutorial course for young people and now it's grown into a hybrid program. We go into schools, we run workshops here at the CCI, we collaborate with galleries all around London and hopefully soon beyond. And again, it's the ethos of engaging people outside of our student cohort with the critical creative computing conversation, ethics, and of course, like skills as well, right? So we can run 3D modeling workshops, virtual reality workshops, and we work with beyond young people now. So I do loads of stuff for young people, but also done some work with adults as well. Examples of past public program workshops that we've run include inclusive design in wearable technology, designing a feminist chatbot, and queering voice AI trans-centered design. And the last video that we've got prepared for you will give you an idea of how vibrant and exciting is the area and culture that surrounds CCI's campus in Southeast London. I hope you get to enjoy it as much as we do. Thank you. The area of Peckham and Camberwell is very much becoming a centre for art and performance and music and so it's a natural home for what is a brand new centre of creative technology. There's so much to do in terms of eating out or bars, pubs. It's very easy to get to like Brixton, Peckham from Camberwell. I love Peckham. Something about the area, Camberwell, Peckham, Newcross, Stepford, with Goldsmiths as well, kind of creates quite a nice community. I definitely feel like where I live, which is close by, has a kind of community spirit. 
every year it just grows in terms of more things to do, cafes, galleries. The galleries I like to go to is the Hannah Barry Gallery, the South London Gallery, Peckham Levels do a lot of pop-up galleries, so it's always changing. Peckham Plex is really cool. It's just next to Peckham Levels. The best thing about Peckham Plex is the cinema tickets are $4.99 and it's the cheapest cinema in London. Also in the area, there's lots of parks. My favourite park is Brunswick Park. It has Bauer Art Gallery set up by UAL students. It's just got such great access into other areas in town. The East London line goes straight to Hoxton, Shoreditch, Dalston. The community at CCI, really friendly. Everyone can just express themselves and just be themselves. It's my third year studying at the Creative Computing Institute and I've been really enjoying my time and I'm very happy with all the knowledge I've got from the tutors and my peers. The community is really nice here. I feel like every time I'm stuck, I can always find the right person to talk to and I always get further with my project. Something about the space is really nice. It's a very kind of calming environment nice teachers I find so it, it kind of creates a welcoming environment. I feel like I can spend a whole day here and feel pretty happy. I can safely say that the technicians are really attentive and kind of excited as well. <laughs> if you get Pete talking about something he'll talk to you for like a very long time about like 50 different things that you could be doing with what you have. I also go to the technical space quite a lot because it's really nice to just walk in and ask questions and then solving the, the issues that always come up when you code. I think the most valuable thing I've learned here is that just by talking with people and asking them about what they're interested about and what they're passionate about, this is how I've learned most. All right, now it's time to start talking about the MA, MSc, Competing and Grief Industry Model or Program, which is the reason why you're all here today. So I'm very happy to pass on the mic to my colleague Hunter, who is the course leader of the program and who will share with you the course approach, units and content. Hello, Hunter. It's a Hello. pleasure having you here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. I have not seen these videos. They're amazing. Um, yes. Uh, it's, it's a really great place to study and I hope today I can get you all uh, excited about the Modular program and explain a bit to you uh, what makes this course so special. Um, Amazing. Yeah, I, can, uh, I can share my slides if you're ready. <laughs> yes, let's do it. Um, ah, thank you. Um, so yeah, welcome to the MAMSC create, uh, Computing and Creative Industry course, which is a modular program, though it's going to work. Um, but just to start off, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, there's my email address, so for any questions you can about the modular program, send them my way, and I'm going to be happy to um, respond as quickly as I can. Um, my background is very eclectic. I've got a background in marine biology, but then I moved on to environmental management, looking at anthropology and bioscience. So biopiracy and indigenous ways of knowing and how indigenous knowledge is used. Um, and I am completing, I've completed my PhD in digital innovation at Lancaster. But um, through this very, very weird and eclectic um, pathway that I followed, what really fascinated me always is conflicts of knowledge systems. So how different ways of knowing um, oppose each other and can stand in friction. Uh, and yeah, who uh, kind of is the winner when different ways of knowing uh, meet each other. Uh, my research is still very much based, you know, looking at natural science and the impact of technology with, you know, the physical and um, environmental sciences. Um, I remain committed to anthropology and historical approaches, uh, but the methodologies I use are ethnography, but I also work a lot with poetry, anthropology, dance, and its relations to racial justice. Um, disability is a theme that um, I'm committed to, and uh, yeah, a lot of <laughs> other digitally rate, uh, related uh, themes, but again, staying committed to power and knowledge and how all of that relates to the digital. 
Um, so one example for that is I've done field work with indigenous communities. And whilst on one hand, yes, I did all the things a traditional anthropologist is expected to do, uh, what I think was much more interesting and much more exciting is I also made a shape-shifting digital dress to explore some of the themes in a way that are non-textual and creative. And um, yeah, that's just a little bit about how I work and what I do. Um, you have not come here to, to, to hear about me, but really about what is CCI and what is uh, the modular program. So um, let's start off and zoom out a little bit. What is creative computing? Maybe that's a term you've never heard before. And why would you want to study computing in art school? Uh, that may not be that intuitive, but I think it's the right place to do it. Um, as you've seen from the uh, videos from the start, is we have a very holistic appraise of technology. We are very aware that technology isn't a thing in isolation, but it sits at the intersection of human relations. It curates how we relate to each other, um, and it embodies very strong power dynamics. You know, who gets access to technologies, who designs them, what do they look and feel like, and who were they designed for, really impacts on how you experience technologies. And technologies embody worldviews and politics and spread them around. Um, and with that, technologies privilege certain ways of living. Um, and another big problem is they are often privately produced. They are black box. That means we don't know actually what does the code do, how does it do it, who owns it, and especially when it comes to AI, which is increasingly uh, more deployed across all aspects of life, from you know healthcare to um, public policy, that is really important and we should be concerned and, and really uh, commit to unpacking these things. And another big problem is that these technologies are being deployed right now without ever having understood the impacts in the first place. So the question then becomes, are traditionally trained computer scientists really the right people to deal with these responsibilities or do we not want more holistically trained socially conscious innovators and if if, they, if you're on board with that then really cci is the right place for you to study computing um of course all our research you know we are aware of the power structures that underline um, CCI, we take into account the ecological impact. We look at the different meanings of innovation and who do we in innovate for, uh, with what agenda and why. Uh, and we explore you know, alternative ways to innovate. In. So slow design for sustainability, um, if that is a premise, how you design an app, it may look, feel, and work completely differently than if your goals are mainly commercial. So working at the intersection of art and design really gives you new avenues and new means to design with, uh, to innovate with. And we are always committed to our work being decolonizing, being feminist, being inclusive. And we don't think about technologies as being isolated. We always think of them as being socio-technologies. So they have a life that is going far beyond the machine and the code that, um, uh, that we are dealing with. Uh, and that is where creative inquiry and computing really um, go hand in hand and produce something really powerful. So that is kind of a little intro to what is the um, scope of creative computing. Um, so what is the CCI? Um, CCI stands for the Creative Computing Institute, and we are an, uh, we are an institute with a very strong research portfolio. So all of our staff are actively engaged in research. And again, we are committed to firmly feminist and political appraisals of technology at the intersection of art and creativity and computing. Uh, we offer courses all the way from foundation courses into PhD. Um, so please do check out our full range of courses. Uh, they are all unique and, and distinctive in their own ways. But we are part, and you will be part if you join us, of the world-renowned University of the Arts. And therein, we are an institute, and I think it's going to be great to talk to the students about that, what it means to study with an institute, because I think it has many advantages. We can generally act really quickly, uh, being a small and dynamic um, study environment for you. Um, so a little bit about how we teach. Um, yes, there's more than just lecture. So unlike a maybe traditional computing degree, 
Um, we very much still continue to use all the teaching methods that you may expect from an art and design school. So there's a lot of facilitation based pedagogy. Yes, you will have lectures, but you also will have many more seminar style teaching. Uh, you will critique your peers work. We will, um, may you, there may be museums uh, visits included in your course where you critique um, artists work or, or innovators work, or maybe we can get the innovators into CCI to give talks so you can um, hear, uh, hear, hear and think about and talk about art uh, with uh, the creators themselves. Uh, there will be class based workshops, you will do presentations, there will be uh, discussions and group work. You have also access to individual tutorials through our tutorial booking system, which is amazing. So every student can link which, whichever lecturer they want to talk to uh, and um, ad hoc have conversations to talk about whatever it is the student needs. You will also, of course, engage in a lot of independent research, but in a very intuitive way. You've seen all the amazing workshops and study spaces we've got, and you will be get supported by, by the creative technologists. And through making and experimentation, there's a lot of really wonderful natural learning happening. And I think that this makes the CCI pedagogy very different from any other computing department where you may want to, uh, that, that may offer somewhat similar things than we do. Um, about our assessment methods, yes, there is a lot more <laughs> ways to assess people's work than essays and exams. So depending on which uh, courses you do, uh, you will get a range, you will, get, you will be exposed to summative or formative evaluations. Summative uh, assessments are the ones that you may be more familiar with. So that could be an essay or an exam or a quiz that tests your knowledge at one precise moment in time. But really, uh, in line with the art and design school pedagogies, we are very much interested in your process. How did your thinking begin? How it is involved? And how has your practice changed? And these are formative assessments, which appraise the overall learning journey that you uh, come to. Uh, and that includes your know, critical writing. You, you may be asked to keep blogs or write reflections on your work on the lectures or seminars. Uh, you may be required to build portfolios of, you know, regular work and just see how it evolves, how your thinking just grows over the weeks and over the lectures and um, your own creative practice. Um, there may be group works and group presentations. You may be asked to produce some code, which then is going to be tested if it works, uh, or you produce prototypes and make work and show that off, um, and which could be part of your assessment. Or um, there is conventional essay work. And of course, there's your major final thesis, which is probably the most exciting part of your study journey. And, uh, my students are currently submitting their theses, and I'm just so proud of them and see what they do. Um, yeah, um, so that is kind of how teaching happens at the CCI. Um, and um, the course that I am looking after is the MA Computing and Creative Industry course, which is modular. Now, that is a course that doesn't exist anywhere uh, else. It is very unique, and I want to explain a bit of what this course is and what makes it special. Um, the modular provision enables you to design your own degree. That means that you can choose any unit from our full post strategy taught portfolio of units and uh, yeah, create the learning journey that you want to embark on. So you are fully able to combine any units in whatever way you want. Um, and uh, according to the units you pick, you will be awarded an MA or an MSc award at the end. And you can also study fully online that is what makes the MA, MSc Computing and Creative Industry course uh, unique and distinct from any other course. Um, so yeah, let me tell you a bit more about this uh, unit picking process. So um, if you look further into the CCI uh, documentation, you will see that we have three flagship postgraduate taught, course, uh, taught courses, which is the MSc Creative Computing, uh, led by the fantastic Phoenix Perry, We've got the MFC Data Science and AI for the Creative Industries, led by the brilliant Louise uh, McCallum. And we've got the MA Internet Equalities, uh, which is led by Peakscraft, who is fantastic, of course. And all these three courses um, have units. And if you enroll to the modular provision, you can pick whatever units you want from these three master degrees and develop your own learning journey. 
you know, you can pick whatever interests you from these different courses and design your own degree. Um, and I want to just very quickly show you what these units are. There's, of course, a lot of units to, to choose from. Uh, and please take note of the website cci.arts.ac.uk slash modulator. That is the website through which uh, which I keep on sending out to my students. They make their choices. They uh, pick their units. Um, yeah, so you can uh, learn coding. You can learn STEM for creatives. Uh, there's a I work in there, but also stuff like feminist coding practices. Uh, so from very coding heavy to creative arts practice based units uh, to um, learnings that are, you know, very much exploring these socio-technical aspects of technology. Um, in term two, again, uh, just a little overview about the units that you can pick. Um, and in term three, again, more units to pick from. And then in the, in the summer, you're going to pick your dissertation project, which can be the MA or the MSc dissertation. Um, and out of all of these units, you design your own course and you, yeah, uh, go on to the learning journey that you are most interested and excited in. So it's really a once, it's a really unique program. Uh, and I, yeah, you'll get to hear from uh, current students on it uh, in a bit. So what is my role then at the MSC Creative Computing Industry? As you can imagine, you will be in touch with all kinds of people. And I am kind of your little island, your little lighthouse. So whatever question you have, um, I am the dedicated member of staff to, you know, liaise with other unit leaders uh, and make sure that your needs are being met. Um, and yeah, in case of any question or queries, you know, you can always approach me. And, um, I help you pick your units and just support you in whatever way you um, you need and want uh, on your learning journey. And especially if you sign up for the online course, uh, I'll be there to make sure that you're being looked after in all the right ways. Um, so, yeah, who might be drawn to the MA, MSc, Computing and Creative Industry? Now we're um, uh, running into the second year and it is really a very broad church. Uh, and on one hand, I do have students who come onto this course and they know exactly what they're passionate about. They know from the very first day which units they want to do and what they want to do for this patient. So it's people with very, very clear visions on what they want to study but on the other hand they also have students who are just excited to develop a creative practice who maybe don't even have a coding background or computational background at all but they want to explore uh critical thinking and creative thinking about technologies so again very very broad church um and it's really up to you to make of this course what you want um and if you're excited to experiment with new media look at new methods uh, of, of doing research and you know really contemporary topics or tools in digital innovation you know the modular provision could be the right course for you um, you are not per se required to have coding skills we don't assume that you know how to code um, because again we want a good mix and a good classroom yes has many people in there who are maybe strong coders even but whatever your background is, you have a space in uh, designing the digital futures. Uh, and there is also a remit for people who maybe not have a background in coding, uh, to, but you have other skills that you can contribute to the classroom. And there is scope to bring you up to speed. Um, so there is space for everyone, but we need to make sure that the classrooms are um, reflecting all skills um, that are needed uh, to, to work in this area. Um, so yeah, any background of yours uh, could be eligible, uh, and you know, from undergraduate to maybe somebody retired. We've not had anybody retired yet, uh, but maybe that could be a really interesting background that enriches uh, our classrooms. Um, but yeah, the main thing that all of my students over the years have had in common is that they want to be in charge of their learning journey, and they want to, you know, have their own path of discovering what creative computing means to them. Um, a little bit about job prospects, but I think <laughs> you can anticipate what I'm going to say. Again, with a really broad church of students that comes to the course, there's all kinds of aspects uh, where your career may lead you. So you could very well work in the arts. You could be going to policy or look uh, or into governance. Uh, you could 
empathize with design and innovation part of your education, or you could go into the tech for good uh, domain. You could work in research and development departments in journalism or the third sector. Um, you could work for charities, NGOs, or uh, freelance and other, stu other students have um, started their own company and gotten some investments. Uh, you could work in some of the really big tech companies and help to make them better because that really needs to happen. Um, so yeah, your future career, uh, extremely uh, variable, what you want to do with it. It's a very flexible degree. And again, you are in charge of what you want to make of your um, time at CCI. And we are here to support you uh, in getting to wherever destination you want to uh, end at. Uh, we've got a fantastic uh, employability uh, team that uh, can help and will be in touch with. So yeah, if you want to apply, um, check out the course website, uh, make up your mind if you want to study with us on site in London, or if you want to go for the online study option. And our very first deadline is coming very quickly. So uh, if you apply be, uh, before December 19th, you will get an answer very quickly. But don't worry if that is way too soon. You can apply all the way until April 3rd or even potentially after that. Um, but we want to encourage you to submit your applications as soon as possible. And the application consists of your CV and your personal statement. There is no requirement to have a portfolio to study for the module degree because portfolios are traditionally something that uh, design students or maybe art students have, but somebody who is not coming from a design or art background is still very welcome in our course. Um, so that is why for this application, you do not need to provide a portfolio. Uh, please use your personal statement and tell us about your creative practice if you have a design, arts or portfolio based background. Um, so to anticipate a few questions. If you have any questions, these are uh, our contact details. You can email cci at arts.ac.uk or you can email me directly. And uh, yeah, please now make use of the chat function. Uh, and I'm excited to hear from you and from, um, I'm looking forward to the students and uh, their perspectives on the course. Uh, Georgina, that was my presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Hunter, for your insightful presentation. That was amazing. Now, it's a pleasure to invite into this virtual space the three students that will be sharing their experience with us today. Um, their names are Proud, Antonia, and April, and they're the three of them current students at the MA MSc program. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thanks for being here. So we have around 20 minutes for the Q&A section. As I mentioned at the beginning, we have some frequently asked questions with us and are going to go through them together. But we would love to hear from everyone here in the session today. So feel free to use the, the chat function and send us any questions, doubts that you might have about CCI or this MAMSC program. And we'll be super happy to, to answer them for you. So, shall we start? Let's go with the first question that we have gathered, which says, how building my own curriculum will benefit me? So I thought that maybe here would be really interesting to hear more from the students, but maybe a little bit about your backgrounds and what was it about this modular program that um, encouraged you to, to apply and to be part of this uh, course this year? Who would like to start sharing a little bit about themselves? April, I you're could... the one on the top. Oh, Antonio. Antonio, right, right. you, you had the, the <laughs> Okay, I could I could begin. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a design background. I'm from Chile, from South America. And I've usually gone in the area of digital fabrication and makerspace. And I decided to go to the modular option more than any of the specific other masters because I wanted this freedom of go and discover different approaches to creative computing. So since I come from that design background, I didn't, I don't have any knowledge previous before arriving to CCI of coding or anything related. So I wanted to have this flexibility to have a look at some of those topics, but also have more uh, insight into 
some of the critical computing and some of the research areas uh, of this uh, of this program as well. So I decided to go to the modular because of my background and having some peaks of some topics and having a little bit discovery and getting to know people from other uh, backgrounds as well has helped me a lot uh, in this uh, in this journey during this master. Thank you, Antonia. That was great hearing from you. Who would like to share next? April. I can go. <laughs> um, so my background, I did my undergrad in the States um, and it was in computer science and art. Um, and then before doing the modular program, I actually did the post-grad diploma at CCI in creative computing. Um, and through that, I kind of learned what I liked and didn't like. And that's why instead of applying for the MSc in creative computing, I chose a modular program because I had, yeah, such as what Antonia said, I had more freedom to choose what I wanted to do. And I knew I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing physical computing, which is a part of the curriculum on the MSc course. Um, and I wanted to spend more time doing theory and also coding and learning more data science. So yeah, that's why I chose the modular program. Hmm. Thank you, April. Um, hi, so my name is Proud, I'm from Thailand. Um, and actually I have quite a eclectic random background, but I did my undergraduate in chemistry and biology. And then I went on to do a postgraduate degree in neuroscience before I eventually came to CCI. Um, so, but being able to do the modular course really benefited me because, as I said, I have a very eclectic interest in everything in the world. And um, I was able to kind of just uh, pick whatever I want from loads of rent, like loads of different degrees on offer, like Hunter already talked about, um, which might not be possible if you were going through each of the degree routes. Um, and at the beginning of the year as well, I was able to kind of go to different lectures because I wasn't sure what I wanted to choose. And then eventually narrowed down my choices to the one that I wanted and I was interested in and having the flexibility to do that because I know I can take whichever module I want really kind of like that that was the thing that made me really want to do the modular course specifically thank you Brown. i'm so happy <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. amazing so we received one question from the audience which would be amazing to cover let's just display it on the screen so it says what is the program you would recommend to a student who wants to continue in the academy among ma msc and mres well, that's quite a, a general question to answer in this um, specific context, because we're here to talk about this course specifically. But my gut says that, you know, the modular program actually gives you the possibility of just literally creating your own uh, curriculum. So whatever your areas of interest are, you have the chance here to just bring them together and, and continue developing your own practice and, and your own studies, right? Um, maybe Hunter would like to share some, some more notes here. I mean, that's a really individual question and I'd, mm. they are, I'd be very happy to have a conversation with you. Um, but really my first uh, piece of advice would be just look at the different programs, look at what appeals to you. Um, the modular program you get to pick from the three flagship postgraduate top courses, the MRS course is very different. Um, and see uh, what you want to do with the knowledge you want to gain. You know, if you want to go into PhD study, I think the MRIS course may be the right journey for you. But you can totally also get a, uh, your degree at the from a modular program and then progress in the PhD study. These pathways are not exclusive and really depends on what you want to get out of your uh, studies. Um, so <laughs> that is my uh, genuine, not very helpful, but honest answer. Um, but feel free to approach me. <laughs> Thank you, Hunter. Yeah, we have our CCI inbox always open. So if you want to drop us an email as well, we can maybe put you in contact with different course leaders and maybe you can have a chat with them. And then all our course decide. leaders are really uh, available. So if you're They're particularly amazing. interested <laughs> in the MRES, also, I recommend getting in touch with the MRES course mm. leader. That'd be great. Yes, here's on the, on the screen, you'll find our email. So feel free to send us a message. Beautiful. So the next question that we have is what technical coding skills and software will I get to learn? 
Hunter, would you like to cover that one? No, I think that's a perfect question for the students. <laughs> you are taking the courses. Uh, yay. Um, I, I can take that one. Uh, no, let's go for it. Uh, so the three modules that I take this term is physical computing and um, coding one and also NLP, which is natural language processing. And that's actually three different um, programming languages and software entirely. So in physical computing, we're doing, well, essentially C um, on an Arduino, um, which is kind of like a, a microprocessor, which I've never worked with before. So that's very exciting. Um, and in coding one, which is kind of like the creative computing digital art um, aspect, which we're learning, um, we're using JavaScript and on an online platform called Mimic, which I believe is created by one of the professors, which is very cool as a, a collaborative online coding platform, um, which allows you to do digital art. And also in NLP, we're mainly using Python. Yeah. Thank you, Proud. April, would you like to share as well? Um, yeah, I'm doing most of the same process, Proud. I'm not doing the physical computing one. Um, in terms of software, for me personally, I've been learning um, a lot of Python, which I've never learned before. And the tutors make it very, very approachable. Um, even learning all the backend stuff, like just how to run a Jupyter notebook. I've never done that before. And it's a little bit scary, like running code in the terminal. Um, so if that's something that you've never done before, um, don't be scared. Like the tutors here make it super easy to understand and follow. I kind of feel like a pro or a whiz at it now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, April. There's also C++ and JavaScript and, and at least uh, yeah. different languages pop up in different units and you do very different things with them. Um, yeah. So it depends on which units you pick. Mm -hmm. Antonia, what about yourself? What have you been learning so far? Uh, I took more, only one coding class, which is natural language processing, which is for Python. And literally what April said, like getting the terminal and I felt like a hacker the first day, like <laughs> with all the code going down my screen. Uh, and I've been getting a hang of it. Now we are turning in our final project and literally I feel I can manage, I can get through it in the code in the Python. And there's lots of resources also online and the tutors are great. I've been asking lots of questions and I usually go like, I don't have any background in programming. I have ideas and they guide me in, in different directions. So just relax and you're gonna get through it. <laughs> Thank you, Antonio. We received another beautiful question from the chat and it's about how to choose the module. So. Are the modules chosen before or after term starts? Um, we're trying to get, and when the course starts in the first week, I had an open uh, event for all my new students where I explained all the rules and the advantages and people, students were able to ask questions. Um, but we're trying to get the unit picking process uh, finalized just before uh, the new term starts. Um, yeah. So there's enough time to ask all the questions. And uh, if there, if you really need to change a unit, there is usually some lenience and flexibility to, to do that. But I try to do my best to provide enough information in advance so all the students can make informed decisions according to their interests and practices. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hunter. I think the next one is also for you. What are you looking for in the personal statement? Your personal statement is really to tell us how have you gotten to this moment in time? Why do you want to study these, thing, these things? What are you passionate about? And what skills can you bring into the classroom? As well as what do you want to gain out of the course? Um, as the modular program is a really broad church and we need to make sure that we curate a healthy cohort where everybody can bring something and also there's scope for everyone to learn all the things to holistically approach digital innovation, which is this huge topic. So just tell us what are you able to bring to the classroom and why are you passionate about the topic and what um, you want to do with it down the line? 
um, we are provide URL is actually providing a lot more information on how to put together an application. I recommend that you look at that. And um, yeah, show us who you are and why you want to be in the classroom. Um, that is the one big piece of advice that I want to give you. Hmm. Thank you, Hunter. Beautiful. The next question that we have is the following one. What kind of work will the course facilitate me to produce? And I thought maybe here it would be really interesting to hear from current students and maybe you can share a little bit about what, what you're working on at the moment. And how is it going? Who would like to start? April, you're at the top. Would you like to share a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... I'm trying to think my final project. So for coding one, which is our creative coding um, course, it's kind of the intro level right now. Um, so we're kind of just learning like JavaScript. Um, and at the end, we're just asked to produce um, just like a digital art piece using sound or interactive um, web stuff. Um, all on the Mimic platform. So if you're interested, you can just go to, I think it's mimic.com. I'm not actually sure what the URL is, but it may be Mimic Project. Um, and you can have a take a look on the projects that are on there. There's also like tutorials or examples of work from students um, that if they've made it public, then you can see it's um, cool to see what, yeah, our final projects are all hosted on that. So you can probably see when we're done. And for NLP, natural language processing, um, I'm doing like a web scraping project, looking at products, um, fast fashion products, and trying to make a generative, uh, generative text thing that will also produce like a new collection of fast fashion products and kind of looking at like greenwashing and greenwashing language. Yeah. Thank you, April. Um, Proud or Antonio, would you also like to share a little bit about what you're working on at the moment? Uh, um, yeah, I can go. Uh, so I'm doing very random things across the different modules that I'm doing. So for physical computing, um, we're working, well, my final project is like, well, the brief is very open. We have to work with sensors and just inputs and outputs and stuff like that. So what I've created is essentially a coat that if someone comes up behind you, it lights up with a warning that you're getting too close. So it uses a LIDAR scanner, which is at the back of the coat to detect how far someone is behind you. And then it starts um, popping up essentially um, into a, like to, to, to make you look big, bigger and more scary if someone comes up behind you and things like that. Um, so it's, it's very random, but it's, it's, it's quite fun. And in NLP, I took quite like a scientific route and analyzed how um, like Twitter and Reddit sentiment impacts the price of cryptocurrency. And I'm looking at kind of statistical analysis behind that and curating the um, web scraping data and stuff like that. So it was quite a, a lot more scientific route as opposed to my um, kind of creative random <laughs> physical computing project. But it's, it's fun doing like the two sides of it as well. Thank you, Broud. What about you, Antonia? What are you working on at the moment? Um, at the moment, I have two ongoing projects. Uh, first, for my natural language processing, I'm working and questioning a little bit about the creative process around the prompt, the prompts that you can design in, in the mid journey or DALI apps. So I'm analyzing how this text is composed, how its syntax is created. And by that, I'm doing some uh, analysis of these prompts, getting them from mid journey, uh, so scraping them and then trying to find like patterns of how they're written and in the future, like question a little bit about the creativity process in this, in the, in these new like image generation and text based, and in that way trying to find a way of, if if it's possible of what is like a good prompt in these image generations, and on the other side I have uh, I'm taking some of the courses in the MA course in the Internet Inequalities so. I took this course, it's Methods for Equitable Technological Development. 
and we're doing this essay comparing two theories, two technological and art theories, and these are um, finding similarities and differences between them, and also having like a personal manifesto and crossing all of these theories in a in a written essay. So there's something more of theory and something more programming. So I have like these two uh, things I need to turn in now. Thank you, Antonio. Thanks so you much for sharing also everyone. Check out all the documentation that the course leader for the Creative Computing Masters um, has online. So past degree shows. And if you are in London, um, there's going to be the final degree show, which is publicly viewable. Uh, so follow the social media channels from CCI. If you, those are events that you'd like to see, um, they're going to be online as well as in person. I believe. Mm -hmm. Great shout, Hunter. Thanks for sharing that. We'll be also sharing the link on the chat so you can book a, a spot as well. That's amazing. Okay, so we received two more questions on the chat and it would be great if we could cover them before we, we end the session. One is, what? how is the creative side of the course incorporated in the classes? Hunter, would you like to go for this one? Um, sure. Uh, it really uh, depends heavily on the unit you've taken. Every unit is taught by somebody else, probably. Um, but all of it, you know, creativity, um, as, as I hope you got from my introduction and presentation, uh, is really the best way or uh, the necessary way to appraise, you know, the complexities of um, the digitized human condition. Um, so on one hand, yeah, you may have students who really want to make digital art of some sorts, but also any type of digital innovation requires creative thinking. So it depends on you, what you want to get out of it, what you want to bring, what you want to explore on the course, how it's taking place, and the type of the things you're passionate and interested in. Mm. So hopefully that is a productive non-answer. Yeah. Thank you, Hunter. Would, would any of the students here would like to share something about it? I think it would be great to hear from your perspective as well. I think that the, I could take this one, but the creative side is incorporated along all the areas. So all the examples that are given, all the projects that are given, it's really up to date and in the creative industry. So lots of the in-class reading or activities, talks, everything is around all of these creative topics. So in my personal experience, that is where I've been getting it, in the lectures, in the, the reading, in the material that is given as a support. So I usually get uh, lots of uh, like notes uh, during the classes of where I've seen it in the, in the creative area, from the programming in the creative, from the critical thinking to the creative. So it's along all of my personal experience in the, in the learning. Mm. Thank you, Antonio, for sharing. Brad, did you want to say something as well? Yeah, um, I, okay. I just wanted to add as well, like, um, along with the stuff that the lecturers give us, um, because the, like, everyone in the course comes from such different backgrounds, um, the discussion with your friends in class is actually, for me, like, one of the most creative side of things, because, for example, like, Antonia comes from a design background, and I do not have any design background at all, so when, like, we discuss our projects and things like that, I'm able to ask her opinions of, like, how does that like in like how like as a designer what do you think about this interaction that i'm having and things like that and just talking to your friends from different backgrounds for me is like helps me like diversify my thinking a little so yeah that, that was what i just wanted to add thank you proud and it's also important to highlight as well that given that cci sits within this like huge network and university of creativity art design like you're literally going to be in the core of an amazing super vibrant community of of artists designers all doing very different creative practices so you will get to learn from out of people get part you know be part of uh different workshops and 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 open open activities so hopefully you'll, you'll be able to really you know get to yeah, get to experience a lot of different topics as well as part of, of your experience at CCI. So that's a, the good thing about being at, at UIL as well. So yeah, good to highlight that as well. Beautiful. Creativity about how I include it in my teaching is really about finding ways to resist the unhealthy 
um, streams that technology or innovation how it happens at the moment um, and how to evade them and replace them with maybe more value-centered design, more sustainable design, more inclusive uh, ways of uh, producing technologies. So that is creativity how I incorporate it in my practice, uh, which is very different to the creativity that maybe um, an artist wants, but then on this creative process is strong um, mm. to, yeah, to innovate. Thank you, Hanta. Beautiful. We've got a couple of minutes left and a few questions that ideally we would cover. One of them is how many people are on the course? I guess that will depend on which modules you choose. So maybe so the smaller here units could... have around 10 students, but we go all the way up to hundreds, uh, maybe a little bit more units in the very large classes. Um, so these different units require different pedagogies, but it's again, always peer to peer learning, workshop, seminar, facilitate space, lectures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, appropriate for the classroom. Thank you, Hanta. And the last question that we received from Zoe, um, they're saying, as the modular course students take different modules to one another, do the students on this course ever get together to share ideas at all? Yes, CCI is a wonderful small uh, space where they are con uh, they are collaborative working spaces. They have a kitchen area, they are study spaces, there's a library. Uh, there are other, <laughs> in the other building, there's a study space and you will run across each other and I offer an enrichment portfolio of additional activities just for modular students. So you will meet your modular students as well as uh, all the other CCI students at the PGT level and create your own community. Thank you, Hanta. How have you lived the experience, April, Antonio, or, or proud yourself? Have you been able to connect with each other, share about ideas, your projects with, with one another? How has it been for you? Um, yeah, so there's like student led, like uh, not like clubs, not really clubs, but like get togethers, um, which just happen on I think Tuesday afternoon or Thursday afternoon, but also like the CCI kitchen space is available for everyone. Even though we all take different um, modules, we get together sometimes on like Wednesday evenings or stuff like that, just to talk about our lives and what everyone is doing. There's also great pub nights as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that you can always find people like in the kitchen. It's just a safe place to go and you're gonna meet others and even though you don't you might not even have courses with them you can ask ideas you can talk you can go uh, to a pub next door and continue the conversation so it's really friendly and there's lots of places where you can meet and and talk about your ongoing projects even though you're not in the same course you can go share your ideas and i think that's the best place where all the the projects like close and and have like other inputs from other people is the best thank you antonio well i think we made it to the end of the event so i wanted to take the time to thank you all for being part of of this experience and for sharing your your experience at the course and at cci thank you hunter for going through all the details with us if there's any other question that we didn't cover that you would like to hear more about, please, please, please email us at cci at arts.ac.uk. Drop us a message. We'll find the answers for you. And yeah, hopefully everything that we've shared already excites you about joining us at CCI. But you can also, as, as already mentioned, you can follow us on social media on UAL underscore CCI. And there we share all about, you know, all the opportunities, workshops, events that we are running or that we're partnering with. So feel free to follow us there. And yeah, hopefully we look, we look forward to meeting you in real life soon. And in the meantime, take care, everyone, and have an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.